first, you can now set up a call background for each and every contact in your list. So if you were to go into your contact edit mode, you would see an option called call background. And now you can go ahead, you could choose from what's there, or you could tap on the plus icon and choose any image from the gallery. It could be their photo or it could be just any random picture. Second, they're making it really easy for you to get into split mode. So just use two fingers and swipe from the bottom edge and then choose the other app for the split pairing. And that's it, it's gonna work. The other way to do that would be, let's go into recent apps and then long press on the app and just drag it either to the bottom half or the top half and it will enter into split mode and then you can choose another app. They're also making it easy to get into pop-up mode. So just drag from the top corner and that's it, it gets into pop-up mode. Samsung phones are finally going to be able to identify text, email addresses, web links from just a picture. So let's say I took a photo and then I tap on this eye icon on the top right corner. It's gonna do its processing and then it's gonna be able to identify all the text that you can copy paste. Or if it's a web link, it'll open up in the browser and if it's like a phone number or an email address, it's going to give you the necessary action to perform. This next one is really important. So if you go into my files, now you can search not just within the file name, but also within the content that's in the file. So if it's a word file or like a photo or a screenshot, it would look up that term. So if I look for Amazon, it also throws results of pictures that contain the word Amazon by performing like an intelligent uh, AI search. I think this was really cool. Also, you now have the ability to search within a specific folder and not across whole of my files. This option was not there in the previous One UI versions and it's made its way into One UI 5. Great stuff. Next, you'll now get a choice as to whether you wish to receive notifications or not from the app that you've just installed. That's great. Also, if you go into notifications, you'll be able to decide the style of notifications that you wish to receive from an app. For example, I hate pop-up notifications, especially from apps that don't need to send it to me, but then, you know, the promotional stuff and the marketing stuff just keeps annoying me. And now I can turn it off. Now, of course, this is an Android 13 thing. And if you look at the phone on the right, which has One UI 4, that option does not exist. Now, this next one is amazing. You know how you give your phone for repair and you're worried about your personal data? There's something now called as maintenance mode that you can turn on and it'll, you know, protect your personal data, pictures, messages, accounts, and they cannot be accessed. Only some pre-installed apps will be allowed. All right, much like iOS, you can now stack your widgets into one widget and it saves you space on your home screen. So if you actually long press and say edit stack, you'll now be able to add more and more widgets from your favorite apps and you can just cycle through them. Now, Samsung had introduced its own widget in One UI 4 to be able to do that, but now it's a native function and it works beautifully. Now, a very tiny upgrade in the camera department. So if you go into any other shooting mode, you get a tiny back button that takes you back into regular photo mode. And now you can access telephoto lenses when you are in food mode. So for whatever reason, if you're trying to capture your food from a distance, it's not a problem anymore. The next change has to do with optimizations. If you go into battery and device care, and if you hit the overflow menu, go into automation. Now, the auto restart is going to be governed by the phone. You don't get the option of choosing when it's going to restart by itself. Earlier, so let me show you how it used to be. So this is the older one. You could actually choose which days and at what time your phone should restart. But now the phone would automatically decide for you, which I think is actually better. This next one has to do with Bixby routines. And if you guys don't know what it is, it's an amazing automation technique in Samsung phones. I've done a video, I'll leave a link in the top right corner, but now you're gonna get a list of suggested routines in one go. So earlier it was sort of uh, spread around, but now it's a more concise list that you could go through faster and activate for yourself really quick by making changes if at all you want to. And what they've also done is taken focus modes from digital well-being and they've moved it under Bixby routines, which I think makes more sense and they just belong here better. 
Next, the Samsung keyboard. So there are two very notable changes. If you go into settings and then more typing options, you'll see something called as enhanced accuracy. Now I'm not sure what it's doing, but when I was gesture typing, it felt more accurate. Also, if you go into layout, you can customize the bottom most row with whatever punctuations or whatever you want. So just take a look at the different combinations that you can make. So depending on what kind of typing you do, you can have something relevant. All right, so guys, did you know that you can have your own photos or set of wallpapers cycle through every time you turn on your lock screen? Now, whether you knew that or not, there's a tiny change over. First, to set it up, go into settings and then you could go into wallpaper and style, hit gallery and you can choose photos that you wish to display on your lock screen. And you can just choose as many as you want. I guess total of 15 and there you go. The change is that now you get the option to edit or remove or add more photos. Earlier, as you can see on the right side, that option is not there. So if you went back, you lose all those selections. So they've made that correction over here. Now, guys, when the Android 12 update came out on Samsung phones and when you set a wallpaper, Samsung would let you choose from four or five color palettes, right? Now, there are actually 12 palettes that it generates for you, which I think is a lot. And then there's also basic colors that you could apply. So if you want like a solid color or a dual tone color, you could go for that. So now you've got many more combinations that you could choose from. There's also a very minor addition to the sound and vibration section. You can now set a custom vibration intensity for all incoming calls and incoming notifications. This was not there in the previous one and now it is. And lastly guys, you can now access apps in a language of your choice. So if you go into general management and hit app languages, it would show you apps that support other languages. And then let's say, you know, you wanna access YouTube in a language of your choice that you're more comfortable with, you can do that. So every app can run in its own language that you set for yourself. Now guys, I've only talked about changes that have mattered to me personally. And there are other changes that I haven't even mentioned. For example, if you look at the notifications now, the app icons look a lot bigger. But if you compare it to the older version, it actually looks a bit more cluttered. Sure, the apps are identifiable, but overall cluttered. They've also changed some of the system icons, which I think looks inconsistent now. Then if you go into settings, there's an option to quickly access remote support. They've added emoji support and calendar entries. There are a bunch of changes that I still haven't talked about, but I don't think they matter as much. Anyway, that's pretty much it guys on the One UI 5. I hope this video was really helpful. And if it was, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon and support the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.